Today's video is sponsored by Boksu, a monthly subscription box of premium Japanese snacks that will take you to another world. Check the link down below to get 10% off, that's up to $47 off your own Japanese snack box. If any of you grains got my merch and it looks like this after a few washes, that is not okay. Please contact Teespring with your order number and they will replace it for you for free at no extra cost. Even as far back as October. Hey Greens, and welcome to another debunking Crayola hacks video. The last time I did this, we actually looked at five minute crafts and the different kinds of Crayola hacks they did, and some of them were absolutely bogus. If you're curious about that video, I will link it down below. For those of you new to this channel, I basically have a love and not so love relationship with Crayola. I absolutely love the brand itself as a nostalgic childhood memory, but many times on my channel, I do um, tend to not agree with their choice of quality. In the trash! In the trash! <laughs> In the trash! But today we are not focusing on Crayola itself, but what others claim it can do. And today we're going to be looking at Trim Trim. Trim Trim is a gigantic channel here on YouTube, but they're not exactly YouTubers. They're a huge company that put actors together and a voiceover, and there you go. Which makes it so that their channel basically has a huge variety of views, anywhere from a few hundred thousand to a few million. But at this point, Trim Trim's channel and their content has basically turned into a running meme. So much so that even big creators like Simply Nailogical are having so much fun debunking and, you know, reviewing the content. If you're interested in her videos, I will leave those also down below. The video we're exploring today is called 12 Funny Pranks and Life Hacks with Crayons by Trum Trum at 4.5 million views. And for those of you new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, I do reviews and crafty things. And while you're here, make sure you click on all notification, which will turn you into a grain of salt, because we're all grains here. Let me know, have you ever tried any of these hacks or any other hacks online and they were an absolute fail? I am really curious, let me know down below. So even though these are basically videos of DIYs, but put into the premise of a story, this story that we're going to be looking at is a new student coming into class and learning that one of the the other classmates is extremely obsessed with crayons. I mean obsessed. She keeps it on her desk, she puts it on her hair, heck she even wants to eat it. That's how obsessed she is. I mean I love my Crayolas, but I, it's not like I go to sleep with them like in my arms. Let's listen to this part here. We are having art class right now. It's so boring. I love the fact that she says we're having art class right now. It's so boring. And yet the entire premise of this whole video is an art hack video. Are they not self-aware enough? Is that what we're doing now? We're self-critiquing? I, I should start probably my crafting videos by saying, Hey Grains, today we're going to be doing a sculpture. That is the most boring thing in the universe. I'm not even sure why you're watching. I am not pleased by doing sculptures. Why? What would this happen? So this first DIY is how to make a huge crayon by melting the other ones. Now let's look at this here, let's pause. They are breaking the crayons into a glass container, but they're also putting it into microwave in order for us to actually melt it. Now I tried melting crayons in the microwave, it does not work. Melting crayons in the microwave doesn't work. So right away we know that this first crayon hack is absolutely debunked if you want to watch again previous videos where we tried this experiment, you can feel free to do so down below. You absolutely need what's called a double boiler method. I had to legitimately use this method in order to make Crayola into a candle, and we also tested basic Crayola candle hacks. So we're going to go ahead and do this one again, trying to do it in the microwave so you grains can see, because I, you know what? I don't want to assume that you know what I did, so we're going to do it again. And I think the idea is kind of cute. You're melting crayons, putting them into a piping bag, and then sticking it into a cardboard toilet paper or napkin kind of thing. What I feel like it won't work is that we are using glue to just glue the edges. Look at this, we're using glue and then hoping that this heavy piece of crayon is going to stick while you're coloring. I feel like everything in this actual craft is going to go wrong, but let's do it. I think we're ready. So we're going to start by taking our Crayola and removing the paper just nicely. Oh, 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 don't take your finger down because no, no. Try to be more stable than I am because, you know, fingers and things. 
And I promise you this injury, I didn't cut myself. Actually, I did. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I, I totally cut myself while removing tape from, from this. I really have no other excuse than just clumsiness. Don't judge me. So I went ahead and removed all the labels off of the Crayolas that we're going to be using. I don't know how much of each color we need because again, Trum Trum and their instructions are just beautiful. I'm being sarcastic. They really do give the best instructions. I'm still being sarcastic. And they really do worry about the safety of their audience. Still a total lie. So for this to work in a microwave, we basically just need a microwave safe bowl as we have over here. And we're going to shove it in there. I will keep your grains up to date. Unless something really changed, this should not melt. A few moments later. Here it is after one minute. Nothing. Let's put it for another two. One eternity later. Huh. It's almost like it's not meant to melt in the microwave. Who would have predicted that? <laughs> So that previous one was just too big and your grains wouldn't see anything, so I just kind of cut it and we're going to tape it. Oh hey, is that melting after like 15 seconds? Go figure. Alright, so here is our heated liquid. I just realized this is plastic. Is it going to melt? I have no idea, but let's... Oh, you really don't need much. Okay, a little goes a long way and we didn't get any meltage. So suddenly I need a lot less than I thought I did. So, note to self, two crayons, too much. I'm gonna start this over. All right, hear me out. We've hit the first, ro well, yeah, the second roadblock. First, it doesn't work in the microwave. But secondly, in order to do the double boiler method, you do need a container that you can, you know, melt it in. And I've been sitting here for the last 15 minutes trying to scrape the Crayola out of this container. Because trust me, you don't want to use any of your glass containers or any of them that you're going to use later because it's going to stain it and ruin it. So, technically, it's really expensive if you're going to use your homemade items. So suddenly trying to do six or seven colors, I'm like, I think my ambition is higher than reality, is, is, is more ambitious than reality. Yeah. So I think I'm only going to do one more color and that's it, that's all we're getting. We're getting a dual color. C -c -du dual color, English. Can't enunciate. English is not my first language, so you're gonna have to forgive me. Oh, and of course English is flying around making fun of me. Let's go. So I went ahead and tried to melt the green. I don't know if it's gonna contaminate, but once it's done, we're gonna see the contamination. And so since my crayon part is much slimmer than I expected, I went ahead and made the cardboard piece a lot slimmer, did a little basic photoshopping to put the label, and just taped it around. All right, so here we are about 45 minutes later, and we should be able to remove this. How did they do it again? All right, so they poured it in there, and then to remove it, Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you are no. Okay, we just paused. I want your grains to take a look at the material, the piping bag that these crayon, melted crayon is supposed to be in. It is extremely loose around the actual crayon. Uh, uh, look, look, look how, did you see? So my guess is that they actually made this separately and then put it in another bag just to make it look like it comes off easily. Whereas if we're looking here, it is stuck. Like, it is on there. It's not loosey-goosey. In theory, though, it should come out easily, but not that easily. It's just so much editing, so much deception. There we go. There. Yeah, definitely not that straight, because there's texture. But at least we have something working here. As you can see here, it kind of went down, so I'm going to even it before we start putting our glue. They don't show all of this stuff. All, all the stuff that's actually important to making the project work. There we go. Done. Well, I'm gonna even it out, don't and we're gonna use my trusty glue gun and it is oh 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 my god did your grain see that holy carp that melted that melted the wax okay look at that glue go look at it go i don't think this is gonna work oh my god <laughs> no okay let's just do this here i don't i don't know what's going on anymore oh oh nope 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 Oh, oh, gross. Oh, no. All right, so to be fair, let's go back and look at that scene where they put the glue, and it looks like they are using school glue. So I'm going to add the white school glue version, because it's one of those rare times where for once, Trum Trum didn't use a glue gun. Usually a glue gun is good for everything, but this time, school glue for some reason. So I'm going to let it sit overnight. Also, before any of the critics come out and say, But Jason, you're doing it wrong. Stop, stop, right there. 
Stop it. I want you to notice that as soon as they put it in, they don't even show her using it. Look at that. She's just holding it and that's it. We go on to the next scene. It, I guess it's just a prop. Also, today I learned that artists can't be friends according to Trim Trim because, listen. Oh man, another artist. And I thought we were gonna be friends. <laughs> So if you grains are artists, we can't be friends, according to Trum Trum. So this relationship is over before it even started. The next day. So here we are 24 hours later and the glue has absolutely set. I mean, look at that. It's really holding on. I thought it would just kind of fall, but similarly to what they did in the video, she held it this way and it's, it's staying. I'm low-key impressed. But you know, I'm only going to be extra impressed if it actually works and we can write with it and it won't fall off. So let me, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, how about the other side? Mm, yep. Nope. There's just not enough space for the crayon to hold. I mean, they're using a, a paper towel carton. So I can say large crayon with paper towel, paper towel holder. I'm so frustrated I can't talk. This hack goes in the trash. All right, Trim Trim, I am ready for the next hack. Andy has a secret crush on Rosie. Andy will write a letter to his dream girl. I love how Andy is 100% on board. He obviously does not have any commitment issues whatsoever. So for this next hack, we're basically going to be recreating candle wax melting, or it's, I guess, basically wax melting in order to seal letters, which I think is a really cool art form. I absolutely love watching them all over TikTok. The fact that we have to accumulate this much wax on the actual sheet before stamping it, something tells me that it's going to harden by the time we get there. So so my guess is again, they're doing the double boiler effect, pouring it when we're not looking, I mean off camera, and then stamping it. But I'm ready, I have everything. Now I don't own a stamp, but I do have the almighty Canadian beaver. So we're going to use this five cent to make our, our little design. That's if it works. All right, I am feeling very purple today for this activity. And okay, here goes our fire. Here is our wax drip so we need quite a bit oh my god that is really pretty keep going keep going keep going okay i think that's good enough let's put our five cent on there drop oh that is very one dimensional but let's see where this goes i am surprised it's so liquidy look how liquidy it is there might actually be hope for this one a few moments later so it's only been a couple of minutes but the wax here has hardened so i think we are on the right track lift oh 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 so, um, note to self, Crayola sticks to money. Let me look for, uh, silicon. <laughs> oh no, it's really stuck on there. Yeah, definitely don't use, look at, it's, oh, that, I don't like that sound. I don't like it. Yeah, it's really on there. <laughs> Let me get a silicon one. Definitely good to know. No, 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 no use of metals. So I will be using this 3D type mold and I'll go ahead and use the flattest one, which is just a flower. Here goes our second try. And we're going to put a lot more of this. Holy carpet's going. Yeah, it's not, it's not accumulating upwards like in the video. All right, let's do this. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the one that they have in the video because it's really building upwards. Whereas this one is just flattening like a crayon would. Again, let's pause freeze frame. You'll see that we actually have height, but not here. A few moments later. So our wax has cooled down entirely and okay, it kind of worked. We did get a little bit of the imprint. However, it does go flat. So maybe we need to melt it from a higher distance so that it does create that bubble. Let's try that one. So I was previously melting it from about this height, but let me try this high. And here we go. Hopefully that will give us more height, but it's still looking like it's, yeah, it's just getting flatter. Look at that. It's just running. It's just running. <laughs> And yeah, about the same. It's still pretty flat. But then again, the real stamps that are actually made for wax are flat. They're, they don't go up in too much of a 3D. So I'm going to say that, yeah, I, this, this, this hack would work. I love how Andy is just extreme. An Andy or Andrew? I'm, I don't remember. I love how excited he is to give the actual letter. And then we have Sean. But Sean doesn't like this turn of events because he thought Rosie was his girlfriend. You heard it here first. He thought that Rosie was his. There's just so much tea going on. At this point, I wouldn't watch Troom Troom for the crafts. I'm just curious what's gonna go down. But yeah, definitely Sean thinks that Rosie's his girlfriend, which means Rosie doesn't necessarily consent to that idea. Hey, Sean, do you know what we do to people who don't understand consent? 
We educate them first, and then we educate them into- <laughs> Hopefully Rosie gets a restraining order from Sean. Andy, don't get your hopes up. Oh, he's got aggression issues. Sean, no, we do not break crayons. Crayons are made for hacks, not aggression. If you have aggression, you need to talk to somebody, buddy. Now the next couple of scenes are basically Rosie and Andrew, I think, at a restaurant. And we still have that stalker. I re Rosie, you need a restraining order, girl. Back to the hacks. Now the next few scenes are basically how to make candles with crayon. But the first one does use real candles for 95% of it and only a crayon for a colorant. I'm going to tell you right away that yes, this will work as a candle, so there's no issues with that in itself. So all of these DIYs are basically remelting a candle. The other part that I can tell you right away that does not work is making a candle straight from crayons. I made an entire experiment video to see what ratio of wax versus crayons will actually give you the best lighting in terms of candle making. And I can tell you up to at least 50 to 70% of crayon only will not work, will not give you light, and will not stay lit. So anytime you see all these five minute crafts, trim trooms, making all these pretty candles out of crayons, they be lying, they be lying to you. This next art project, or as they like to call it, hacks. Oh my God, why is there snow cleaning? So much snow cleaning is something I've been genuinely curious about whether or not it works or if the colors really do blend. The idea is we're going to be taking white, I think black, and blue in order to make a galaxy effect in a metallic piece. And we can see that they really are packing it high because when it melts, it flattens. And then afterwards, we basically glaze it with nail polish. I do have glittery nail polish, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. But I like to point out that even in their own voiceover, they made the mistake of saying, stars with white paint. It says add stars with white paint. However, in this case, they clearly do use hexagonal glitter. Not that I know anything about glitter. <laughs> So I can definitely do that, but I will use the type of glaze that is very glittery. So that is a cute project. I am really interested to know if the colors will blend. Because the last time I tried to put crayons together, they all became brown. I wanted a rainbow effect, but they became brown, so. So we're going to be using this metallic brooch over here. Since we don't need to worry about actually putting tape in the oven. Yes, Trim Trim told you to put a piece of plastic adhesive into the oven. Look at that. No, don't do that. Don't. And here are our three colors. Time to do some shavy savies. And again, if we look at their video, it seems like they're putting the black crayon completely at the bottom. So we're going to make sure that we do layer it in the exact same order. Look at that. That's some cutesy shavings here. That is really cute. Bear with me here. Nobody mentioned that shavings from crayons are extremely staticky. They just want to stick to everything. You just, let's move it over there. But no, it's on you. Let's move them, but no, back on you. Try to push them with the other fingers, but they're just gonna end up everywhere. So keep, keep that in mind, that is so frustrating. Basically what I've been doing for the last 10 minutes is trying to move the shavings off me. And then I forgot what craft I was doing. <laughs> I basically ended up going with bigger chunks rather than the shavings over there. Yeah, you. I'm not happy with you. Get, get out of here. No, no. And same thing for the white. So I basically ordered in the same way that they do in their video to make sure that the darker colors at the bottom and then our white is completely on top. Also, if we look at the video right before they put it in the oven, we can see that it does have some height to it. So I definitely went ahead and made sure that ours has a little bit of height. They don't tell us how long it stays in the oven, so I'm going to put it at 350 degrees, this much in Celsius, until it looks like it's melted. I'm guessing 10 minutes. Later. Er, me. I'm not exaggerating. It worked. This is way beyond my, my, my. My expectations were down here. I did not expect it to work, but I'm guessing the chunks and the small environment and the stackability made it work. I think this calls for celebration, so we're going to be using a hollow taco top coat or taco at the top coat. So the idea is that the glaze, well, the nail polish should give it a little bit more life for it to look a little bit more professional. Oh wow, that looks good. That already looks way better. And here's the side by side of the before and after. You could see them without glaze and with glaze. And so once the nail polish is hardened, it really has this beautiful look to it. I did not, again, I don't know if you could tell, but I am absolutely stunned that it works. And I think I may have overdone it. You know when you do a project really well and you're like, hey, 
hey, maybe I can add a little bit more personality. And then you ruined it. I think that's what happened when I added the um, shiny nail polish. I think I kind of ruined it. Let me know in the comment section below, do you prefer with shiny or without shiny? I'm gonna have to admit that I prefer it without shiny. Should have just left it as it is. And I think it's kind of adorable that the Trum Trum characters- Oh, oh, um, watch where your hand was going there for just- I know, I know you wanted to help and say here it goes, but watch where your hand is going. <laughs> So it looks like they're finally solidifying their friendship, even though they're both into art and they couldn't be friends. Remember what did they say at the beginning? Oh man, another artist. And I thought we were gonna be friends. I guess there's hope after all for us. So as I'm saying, you greens can see that this drama is still happening. There's a lot of tea going on between these characters. And even though they spilled water on, I forget her name, let's just call her Crayola Girl. Even though it's only water that's been spilled on her, she definitely takes this project to a whole new level. I thought she was going to color on her shirt, but no, she actually went ahead, graded the crayons, and then put them on her as a stencil. The idea looks really cool, but I did actually debunk this exact same concept from five minute crafts. Yes, you can definitely do that on a t-shirt, you can iron it, but the design flakes off and you can definitely not wash this. So I'm going to tell you right away, this has been debunked. It cracks, it doesn't stay, end of story. This next hack just is absolutely absurd. You can see that the idea, we're, we're pausing right there, the idea of having melted crayon as a phone case, but they're using the hair, what's it called, hair straightener. I have a really straight hair, so I've never used one before. Is exact idea that they use in their thumbnail. So technically they're not clickbaiting, but they are clickbaiting because we are not using it in this next project. However, it is in the video. And this girl is so obsessed with these with the crayons. She's really obsessed. It's straightforward. We're just going to melt crayons with the hairdryer, let it drip on the paper, cut it out, and then place it on the phone case. I really don't see how this is going to make a good phone case because it's just in the way. It's bulky. It's a piece of paper with crayons. And if I'm not mistaken, last time we tried putting crayons directly on paper, it does flake again. So according to the instructions, they call it cardboard, piece of cardboard. Listen to that. Attach crayons to a sheet of cardboard. But from my guess, you can see that once it's finished, the paper is actually warped. So my guess, I keep saying I guess, because they really don't give that many instructions, is that it is indeed card stock paper. So this is normal printer paper, card stock paper kind of like cardboard and it's white. So I'm going to use cardstock paper and we're going to glue with a hot glue gun this time. You see, usually they use a hot glue gun. We're going to start with red. Make sure that Crayola logo is up there. We need to get the algorithm. <laughs> okay, start with red glued here and we're just going to make our way with the other colors side by side, no space. And now I'm going to use this really old hair dryer. It's been in our family ever since I can remember. Maybe Maybe even before I was born, I'm not sure. It's basically become my official craft hair dryer. It's really old, but it still works. Apparently it's made in Hong Kong. When was the last time things were made in Hong Kong? So believe it or not, I've never done the melting crayon type of, what's it called? Um, craft? I am crafter, I do things. <laughs> So I have no idea how long this is genuinely going to take, so I'm just going to sit here and um... Do this. Oh, it's getting heavy. I'm gonna make sure it's at an angle and I do have a catch me paper at the bottom. In case you're wondering why I didn't remove the paper, you're going to see again in the Trum Trum craft, they keep the paper exactly as it is. So when I tried doing it while it was standing straight, the it was just flying everywhere. So I decided to make it laying down at a very slight angle, but then for some reason, the colors wanted nothing to do with the center. It's almost like I was standing there and asking people to be my friends and just like moving around me. That's that's basically the story. It's hits close to home. <laughs> So I feel like the amount of flow that they are getting is probably because they may have actually melted it in the oven or they had a heat gun. Now correct me if I'm wrong, Trum Trum, but these videos are usually aimed at a younger audience and I don't think they're going to be manipulating a heat gun, let alone a hairdryer. You can actually hurt yourself regardless. But the colors are absolutely beautiful and they have dried. We're going to cut a little part of it and see how it looks like as a phone case. I don't think we're gonna take the time to actually glaze it with nail polish, but you'll see why. 
cut. So here is our cutout piece, but what they don't tell you is that once Crayola hardens in thicker pieces on paper, if your paper bends, yep, you saw that? Because I don't know about you grains. But when it comes to putting our phones somewhere, usually it'll be in a backpack or your bag. So obviously it's going into tight spaces, which means that a piece of paper with this much thickness of crayon is just going to end up peeling. Look at that. So your phone case really has no integrity, at least your phone case design in this sense, has no integrity whatsoever. Oh my God, where did these snippets come from? Yes, those shavings are back and they're still haunting me. Okay, let's put our piece of paper on the phone case like they did, like so, and there it goes. So I really don't know in what universe a piece of paper stuck to a phone case is actually aesthetically pleasing. Even if we look again at the freeze right there, when it's on their phone case and they're glazing it with nail polish, it's still looks ugly. The colors are pretty, but the phone case idea is absolutely terrible. It's sticking out of your phone. Uh, hello? Is this the 1990s? Look how big my phone is. Yeah, I just needed to make it bigger. It's a iPhone 15. <laughs> No. So I would say that this hack definitely goes in the trash. Debunked, doesn't work, it's just gonna flake off of your piece of paper. So now we are back with June and Sean. Now that's that's her name, now I know it. Being absolutely extra because she is intense with her crayons, trying to make a little headband with Crayolas. I really don't see any kind of occasion where this is going to be. Uh, actually, you know what, Grains, I heard there's a Crayola world in the US. When travel is allowed again, I'm going to wear a Crayola crown and walk into Crayola world. So obviously June being super obsessed as she is, she feels the need to color her friend's hair. Now, this is something I think is really interesting. I really don't think it's going to work because apparently they make a brush out of crayon. Why? Why do you need to ruin a perfectly good brush? Glue some crayons on there with... with why? Why would you do this? It's just waxy and you're ruining a perfectly good brush and then she's brushing her friend's hair and then suddenly there's a color. Obviously as adults we will not fall for this because Crayola will not color your hair. However, an impressionable audience might actually try this. But you know what? I'm curious and I'm impressionable so I want to try this specific hack. Well, I'm not gonna make a brush though. I am not about wasting things that are perfectly good. But instead, I will take some Crayola and see if it actually colors my hair. And we're gonna take every color possible. We'll start with bright colors and then go to dark colors. All right, so we are really close. We're very intimate. This is almost old school nerdy crafter where I didn't know how to record and I was so close to the camera and it was just, it was very uncomfortable. <laughs> I think it was very uncomfortable for you grains, but nobody said anything. So I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna take, I know my hair is dark, but let's go ahead and rub some of that yellow on there. And as you can see, nothing is happening. Let's take this strand. Nothing is happening, no yellow, no color transfer, because that's just not how it's made. Orange, my favorite color. What is, what is your grains' favorite color? Let me know in the comments section below. I mean, we're this close to each other. We might as well get to know each other and maybe even take each other out for supper or something. <laughs> So yeah, there's just no color transfer whatsoever. So this idea of making a brush that's going to transfer color is absolutely misleading. And it's almost like it's a hack for no absolute reason whatsoever than just for them to have a giggle and see people recreate it. Or even at this point, maybe it's just a meme and they're just trying to get away with it. But at the end of the day, no, I would have been surprised if it did work. So color trend. Color transferring Crayolas go straight. In the trash. As mentioned at the beginning of today's video, we are sponsored by Boxu. It is the season of love. So if you really are looking for a gift for someone who absolutely loves to try and taste new things, in addition to learning about Japanese culture, then you might want to consider Boxu, which is a premium Japanese snack subscription box that focuses on quality rather than just dagashi, which is, you know, kind of sugary and super cheap snacks. Or if you're looking to spoil yourself, do it. If you're looking for a sign, do it. I can't say this enough, but Boksu really is my favorite Japanese snack subscription box because every month you will get anywhere between 20 and 25 amazingly themed snacks. However, if you are a first time customer, you're going to get a box called Seasons of Japan where you get to taste a little bit of everything. And after that, the themes change monthly. Just like this box, the theme is love. But in the past, they've had themes like Autumn Harvest, Colors of Kyoto, and Winter in Hokkaido. Some of my favorite snacks in Boksu really have to do with fruit 
and especially this month we are getting peach and oh my god I love Japanese peach in previous boxes the snacks that came integrated with apple were just absolutely delicious my favorite things about Japanese snacks really have to do with the absolutely wonderful balance of flavors they're not too sweet and they're not grossly salty either let's try from this month's box Okayama white peach castella Ooh. oh my god so delicate Oh, like a peach yogurt. Strawberry Kirara sandwich cookie. Oh, the color. Oh, wow. It's like buttery strawberry. Look at that. Oh, less of a crunch than I expected. Oh, freeze dried strawberries. Oh, my God. All right, this one's unique. Pickled ginger rice crackers. Okay. Ooh, very tangy. You can see there's a little bit of pink on there, too. Oh, if you like those little pink gingers that come with your sushi, think of it as a mild version. So in addition to snacks, you're also going to be learning about Japanese culture because these little magazines that come in the box tell you where each snack is from, different cultural events, as well as whether these snacks have any potential allergens and if they're vegetarian friendly. And you also get to taste snacks from artisanal Japanese companies. So companies that are well over 100 years old that are producing amazing snacks. They even have a website that tells you all about the different makers that they work with. So what are you waiting for? Check the link in the description box below to get 10% off, that's up to $47, on your own authentic Japanese snack subscription box, and make sure to use the code NERDYCRAFTER10. Thank you, Boxu, for sponsoring today's video. I absolutely love trying Crayola-type hacks, so if you have more of them, leave some in the comment section below. Remember, links are just going to get automatically pulled down, so make sure you leave the name of the hack or the name of the video and a timestamp where I can find it. If you want to watch the previous Crayola hacks video, I did have quite a few of them, watch up here. I made a playlist just for you. And if you want to watch a video that YouTube thinks you haven't seen yet, make sure you check down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.